Okay, back with a short video. I've been playing around with this pop-out GPS. You saw may have seen my video about using an iPad for an external one. And uh, using Air Manager now, I'm trying to uh, implement it into uh, a panel layout. Here I have a uh, 182 Cessna layout that I had uh, made. And uh, you can see that's using Air Manager. I don't have the, the visual computer running now, but I just wanted to run this. I'm actually running... Uh, X-Plane on this computer. I'm going to use that as the master uh, and I'm going to put the visual up on the other computer which has a little more horsepower. So this one is going to be running but by dialing back the graphics on this I can get the uh, frame rate to a pretty decent number. So you can see I have a nice looking panel here that uh, is all touch control of course. So you can you can change the heading with your fingers. You can adjust the altimeter setting and so on. So it's all touch control, you know, switches. Switches can be done by, uh, by touch. Uh, change the fuel. You can, you can rotate the fuel selector and so on. Okay, this auxiliary panel I have here, I have uh, just some other instruments uh, set up and I'm, I'm gonna put this all on one big panel, I think. I have a big screen TV with a touch uh, overlay and I'm planning on looking at that soon. But I wanted to play with this a little more, and I want to show you what I did. What I did was, uh, as you can see, there's a frame here. I, I undocked the uh, Air X-Plane window and brought it over to my monitor here. And then I've uh, just aligned it up with the, uh, with the overlay. And the reason I use this overlay is because I, I've tried it. The buttons will work fine, but you don't get any feedback on the buttons. When you use my buttons here on air, oops, I need to, hang on, let me get the mouse. I need to set this thing so that it won't move. I'll just click uh, lock, and now, as you can see, it won't move. So what, what I'm trying to show you is that, like, look at the range button. Um, if I touch the range button, see how it gets dark when I touch it? So I kind of get some feedback, plus I put some oral feedback of a click. I don't know if you can hear that, but anyway, that's that, the way that works. Those buttons work just fine, though. That wasn't the problem. Now, the problem comes with the, with the knobs. Uh, it was virtually impossible with your finger to click in the right spot. So I'll show you how this works. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let's go to the frequency here, and I'll drop back a little so you can see it. And I'll try to hold the phone steady while I do this. I'm going to adjust the, uh, you can see we have selected the uh, this COM number uh, standby there. I'm going to touch this. When I touch, oops, I touch the center. When I touch the uh, rim, rim, if I touch the center, it's like pushing the button. But see how it's highlighted, that knob? And then I just come outside that knob, and I've got it set so that it takes 45 degrees a turn for each click, so you can do it pretty accurately uh, and not, not be overshooting the frequency. And you get that click feedback each, each one, so you can kind of hear that for feedback. Same thing with the outer one. See, the outer one I've oversized, so there's a little bit larger area to touch. And, uh, and again, come outside there, and you can see the frequency. You can see the frequency changing up there. So it's pretty easy to get to the right frequency with that reduced, uh, you know, when it's taking 45 degrees for each click, for each change. Um, and then, of course, then, then, you know, you got your swap button up here. So you can just hit the swap button and sw swap, the, swap the frequencies out. For some reason that's uh, catching and it doesn't do that on the VOR but I have to look into that but you can see it's changing uh, the frequencies over on the com com uh, navcom one too so anyway that's how that works uh, same thing with the uh, all the other buttons are working you know direct uh, enter clear and we can change chapter in, in uh, right here we can change pages and we can change chapters. And then if we want to push for the cursor, we can do that. We just touch in the center and it touches, it push, pushes for the cursor. So the, so you just got to touch, basically reach right for the, the dividing line there and you get the outer one. If you touch in the middle, you get a click. And if you touch outside that, you get the large one. So it's pretty easy to manage. Uh, so now we have a fully functional, awesome GPS that was made by Laminar Research mounted into our Air Manager panel. We have a way to start navigating and actually do some real training in a cockpit that's air manager. 
I'll do another video later when I get the, the visuals all figured out. Uh, I didn't try to set that up yet, but I've done it once before and it was quite easy. In fact, I have a video online showing you how to set up an external view. I'm going to run all three uh, views off my uh, more powerful GTX 1070 card. And then I'm using this 770 that I have here to run the uh, to run this uh, panel, or this three visual, there's the overhead, three visual, three um, touch screen panel that uh, can emulate a cockpit. Uh, I got a lot of space between here. I, I When I move the uh, monitors back, I kind of run out of room, so I'll be sliding this back together until I can get my... Uh, my uh, 42 inch monitor working and then I should be able to put the whole panel you know straight across which will be much better it'll look much more uh, realistic it's a 4k monitor so it has lots of pixels and I can make it look really uh, really lifelike uh, you know keep the instruments uh, fairly uh, large uh, so they'll be pretty much lifelike although this as you can see with my hand here this is not that far off if I reach out and touch the panel you can see that that's probably pretty close to life size right there. Okay, thanks a lot. Short video. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see future videos. And uh, there again, uh, moving the GPS to the, uh, popping it out and moving it over to the panel and then putting the frame on top gives you all the functionality you need and it can nest right in among all the other instruments. In fact, this little title bar up here It'd be nice if there was a way to hide that, but if not, I can just make a, I'll just extend the frame of this instrument up so that it matches perfectly with that and it'll cover it with the background color. Um, that's just an option that we can use if we, uh, if we want to make it look good. But I mean, what an awesome GPS and uh, fully functional. You can't beat it. All the buttons are there, feedback, the whole works. So, you know, I think, uh, I think this is the answer to my, uh, my prayer is to have some way to get some good navigation into um, an X-Plane cockpit uh, since most of the third-party products don't work. Now, I asked uh, Ben Supnick at, at Laminar if there was a possibility that this that, that, that X-Plane could remember the location and size of a popped-out window so that each time you popped it out, in fact, I'd like to see some modifier key like control, control click instead of just a click, and instead of just bringing it out in the screen, it would bring it to a popped out window and put it back where it was the last time it was popped out and moved, where it, where it last was when it was last closed down, you know, the last time it was positioned. And then you could have it automatically resized and positioned every time you started up, you popped it out, it would go right back to where it was and be ready to go. And you wouldn't have to go through the resizing and moving and all that, because that can be somewhat of a pain. Okay, thanks a lot. See you soon.